Hello there guys, PC guy here and uh, yes I have my headset on for this video because we're going to be looking at uh, audio and an interesting program I came across that uh, should help some people that are more into streaming that sort of thing to uh, get the setup going and get their audio under control has a few interesting options and even for me that I don't stream much it might be something very handy because of some special effects that it has. It might improve the sound and the voice quality. I'm talking about the voice meter banana and that's meter with M-E-E, -E, which I found strange and a bit uh, weird for a name. I thought it was uh, actually a meter, but uh, that's besides the point. It is a free software that you can try out. I'll give you a few uh, starter headers of how to set it up. Uh, there are very good videos out there. I uh, actually look at a few myself uh, to get it going and to start knowing how to work with it. Uh, just everything has a good video about that, so check that YouTube channel if you want some more in-depth explanation of how to set it up. But I'll give you a few pointers and uh, show you where to download it and all that sort of thing. All the links will be down in the description for all the programs that you need. They are all free uh, software, so you don't need to pay for anything like this. And uh, it is reasonably easy to set up. Before you go and download it, a fair warning, after you download it and before you actually set it up, you might lose uh, audio on your headset or speakers or whatever you're using to listen to me right now until you actually get the settings in place. So before you do that, I'll just walk you through that real quick. Uh, here, A1, A2, A3 are hardware out, so the devices you use to listen to stuff, in this, in my case, my headset. You want to go here and download and uh, select your headset here. The WDM, MME, etc. are just different types of uh, drivers. I have had most success with the WDM, so recommend you choose that one unless it gives you issues. Select the device you use, it will depend on what you use. In my case, it's my HyperX Cloud Flight headset. I did a review on that. If anyone's interested, I'll put a link uh, up above for you guys to look it up. Select that and make sure A1 and A the two A1s here, which is the headset that you chose, are activated. These two virtual inputs, they are the um, sound from your PC, so desktop, audio, uh, games, uh, Discord, whatever. It will be uh, displayed here on uh, these two virtual inputs. Knowing this that I just told you, go ahead, download the program. You'll want to download and install bo both the voice meter banana program and the cable output, which is VB cable. I also have a link down there. Install them both, reboot your system. Uh, make sure that you put these settings that I just uh, mentioned here and uh, here active. Otherwise, you will not be able to listen to the rest of the video. And you also want to make sure that on your sound tab under playback, that voice meter input is set as default. Okay, so I kind of jumped halfway through into giving you the settings before actually telling you to install the program. That is just so you can actually keep hearing what I'm saying and going on with the tutorial before you actually install. Otherwise, you'll have no sound. You might uh, be uh, left wondering exactly how to get your sound back and lose some time actually fixing stuff. That is a normal part of the installation. So uh, make sure you watch that before actually installing the program. Now that you should be able to actually hear me again, this is basically the standard menu. You have your input, so your microphone. You want to put the microphone that you use. In my case, it's a USB mic. It does not show here, but I have it selected here. And you want to have it selected on the same codec type that you selected there. So if you have WDM, which uh, is my advice, make sure you select a WDM here as well, unless it gives you issues, in which case try one of the others, but make sure they all match between them all. Here I chose to have the cable output for one reason. This is um, this is the track that it will be used to actually send stuff to programs like OBS, etc. If you choose to mix different tracks, I personally don't have my tracks mixed. I have my voice tracks separate from, the, for example, the game sounds, the Discord. I have uh, all that on separate tracks for the reason that if you want to adjust audio in relation one thing to the other, you want it on separate tracks and not on the same. I get it if, that if you're streaming, it's uh, probably a different story, but uh, we'll get to that. And I just have that a bit set up for YouTube instead of streaming in any case. What you can do is um, this, like I mentioned, are the desktop tracks and this will be sent to OBS um, 
XSplit, whatever you use to record a stream. And there's the reason that why there's two of them. You can, for example, have one with your microphone and one without. And uh, what this will enable you to is you can send, for example, this one for OBS and record with your um, mic in and have the other one sending to Twitch, whatever, I don't know, uh, with or without your microphone. So you can have two different uh, types of setups going on like that that you can more easily manage. And then you can adjust volume on each individual track, uh, one for the recording, one for the stream, if you wish. You have uh, equalizer, treble, etc. Bass. You have a lot of settings here that you can use then to um, kind of personalize how you want your sound to be uh, sent for each individual program that you're using or with each source that you have. Uh, it's very customizable and uh, did I mention it's free. Now, if you've watched me for a while, you know that I'm not exactly the most audiophile of creators around here. I try to keep things uh, a bit on the basic side, but decent quality, but not too elaborate. For starters, uh, you have a very handy noise gate here. What noise gate does is any sound under a certain threshold will not be captured by the microphone. It will not trigger the microphone to actually pick up sound at all. So if you, uh, I have, for example, at 6.9, I was testing it with the humming from my PC. Uh, I will, I actually have RTX voice on as well next to the noise gate. So I can't really show you that easily. And there actually, there is a few tricks to getting to work with RTX voice as well for noise suppression, which I'll show in a second. But what this does basically is if you have things like, uh, PC fans humming, uh, slight background noises. You can set your noise gate a little bit higher and it will stop some of the background noise without actually compromising uh, your voice quality. As for getting it to work with RTX voice, my first thought was uh, selecting RTX voice here as the input. Now that did not work. I got a whole ton of static. It's just a matter of the software is not playing uh, well together. So that was not really the solution. What I did though is, as you see here on the input, I have it sending to uh, B2, which is the voice meter aux. So what I did is I came down here, I went to RTX voice, and on the input device, I put um, this one, which is where my microphone is being routed through. I set this one as the input device. I have already tested it, it does work. I'll show you how it goes in RTX then, on uh, OBS I mean. So then when you are in OBS, you just head to your audio settings and you have your uh, input as RTX voice and your sound will go from your mic to uh, voice meter banana and then through RTX voice to filter the noise and back here. If you are not using RTX voice, then what you want to do is have it as the um, output that you have set up in banana. And so, yeah, you, I would just have it like here if I did not want it to get filtered by the NVIDIA software. I mentioned some uh, handy effects that you could use to kind of boost and improve your voice quality. And this is actually going to be a first for me. I have not tried it myself off camera, so let's just see how it looks. This panel here enables you to kind of uh, give a bit of a boost on your voice in terms of echo and bass and etc. You can right click it for uh, some different effects, position or your position relating to the mic. This will, this is if you right click it, if you change it, for example, you can always um, double click it and it will go back to its default. So no irreversible damage caused. And uh, you can also change here the equalizer, treble and bass, etc. for whatever effect you wish. Uh, for if you want to monitor how it actually sounds and how it changes your voice, all you have to do is here click A1 and you'll have uh, the feedback of what you say. You're, it's going to be monitored back through your headset and you can hear in almost live how it sounds. I usually don't have that on by default because it sounds a bit strange hearing what you're saying right back at you in your head, but for monitoring purposes, I'll turn it on just to see how it sounds like. So apologies if I get a bit uh, incoherent because I always find it very difficult to keep up a uh, conversation and speech going when I'm hearing myself <laughs> on my headset, but let's see how it goes. So right now I'm hearing myself. It's really strange. In any case, uh, it's not filtered through RTX voice, so I'm also hearing my PC hum, all the stuff. In any case, uh, let's see exactly how this changes how it sounds. 
Let's play around first with this echo thing. And uh, yeah, you can definitely notice quite a difference in the tone. I hope it's audible with you guys. So yeah, it all depends what you are trying to go for. If you wanted a bit more of a boomy voice or a bit, an echoey voice. So it really depends what you're aiming for in terms of your sound stage and what you want to sound like for your uh, recording stream, etc. And yeah, you just double click it, it goes back to default and uh, yeah, no harm done. With the other settings, the modulation, you can uh, get some pretty weird stuff going, I see. Uh, there's this whole robot if you want to be able to this is very creepy, no, actually. In any case, I don't see myself using this very much, but... It's definitely something if you are going on for some uh, weird effects while you're uh, doing your stream and stuff or some extra shock value, then uh, it's definitely something. Last but not least is position. This is relating to your position uh, in regards to your microphone right now. I'm that smack in the front, so this is pretty accurate. There's the distance. If you're far from the microphone, you pull it further back. It changes the sound like you hear. Uh, if you are left or right, uh, you can change it to the left, right to the microphone. If my feedback on my headset is uh, accurate, that plays some uh, games. If you have a stereo headset with different, well, most of them are, with different sound feeds coming from the left or right, this will unbalance that if you set it to the left or right of where you are. So yeah, like I mentioned, you have the equalizer with the treble bass, etc. right here. And you also have a more detailed equalizer here. If you click, right click, that is on EQ, then you have a full on equalizer. You do have to then left click on it to enable it for the audio track that you want to have it enabled for, obviously. So yeah, let me disable the monitoring. So I'll just disable the monitoring because that was driving me crazy, really. But that's mostly what I wanted you guys to look at. It is by no means an in-depth tutorial to this uh, software. It's just uh, kind of a sneak review of what it can do. Like I mentioned, I'm not the most uh, audio savvy of the YouTubers. I can do the basic stuff, but I found very interesting what it can do in terms of your voice depth, that boom that it can give to the voice if you play a bit with the settings as I just mentioned. And uh, yeah, these are very easy settings to do. Uh, EQ stuff is Honestly, at this point beyond me, I don't have the, I still have a lot to learn in terms of audio manipulation to go and uh, do a, an EQ profile that would work for me. But this stuff is extremely easy to use, extremely simple, and it can produce some interesting results, both in terms of general quality with this um, FX echo panel. But this modulation one also is handy for some uh, a bit more dramatic slash comedy effect if you're into that in your stream or recording, so that's handy. The noise gate is um, a handy addition, however, uh, it kind of complements RTX voice in uh, different ways. RTX voice is good for some sort of noises, but I have noticed, for example, um, keyboard noises, clicking noises, it's not so good for, and for that, the noise gate might actually be a bit more advantageous than RTX voice, but there's nothing really stopping you as long as you set it up correctly from using both at the same time for ideal effects. The downside of all of this is it does take some work to set up and uh, you kind of have to have it running. So I recommend that you go here on the menu and make it run at startup. Otherwise, you might find yourself just starting up your PC and having no sound or no microphone input because it all then is routed through voice meter banana. Now you're telling me, wait up, the program has to be running 24-7, otherwise it might not uh, you know, work out too well. Well, that's not really going to uh, take a lot of system resources from you. Uh, I'm using it right now 
obviously, and it is taken 1.9% of CPU power and 2.9 megabytes of memory, according to the task manager. So that's not really a whole lot. Even if you have a lower end machine, you probably won't notice much of a difference. Now, I find this program quite interesting, especially given that it's free. You can feel free to try it. If you don't like it, you just uninstall it. Sure, you might have to redo a few settings on your uh, sound control panel, but out of the end of the world and it's not the most difficult thing to do either. I definitely will be trying to uh, use it to kind of improve the way my sound looks, but uh, sounds, <laughs> that is. But I'll just, I'll be quite honest, I'm not the person with the best uh, touch for audio uh, refinement, let's call it. So I'll probably just try to find a good option and just leave it at that and call it a day. I'll see how it goes and maybe you'll notice an improvement in the videos of the future. Once again, the links will be down in the description below. I will also put a link there for the stuff that I use for this video as in the headset and the microphone that I used if you like the way it sounds. Also, I have a review for both of those. So uh, feel free to check uh, in the channel. I'll also probably put a few cards up there right now at the end of the video if you want to check those reviews out if it's stuff that you would like to get yourself and yeah hope you guys have enjoyed the video once again not the most in-depth video but it's enough for you guys to know what it's all about what the capabilities are and if it's something that you guys could use for for example your streaming or recording setup this has been Attic PC guy feel free to click on the link drop a comment let me know if you think this is useful or not on what could i do better next time on the video like this what you'd like to see if you would subscribe to the channel it would be greatly appreciated that would help us grow and do more and better videos for you guys in the future and that's really what i need the most right now is uh, to get those subscriber numbers up so hope i'll see you guys in the next video and in the meantime have fun